morning. As you can hear, it's raining. Welcome to day five. So it looks like the rain set in. It's pretty, um, it's pretty heavy. I just had to get the tent down. It's absolutely sodding wet. I shook it out as best I can, but I don't know what else to do. It's like attached to the outside of my pack. Luckily, there's straps there, so I could do that. And uh, maybe later in the day, when it, if it stops raining, I'll have to get it out and try to dry it off because for sure all the inside is wet. There was like mist coming through, and it soaked my sleeping bag and stuff after a while because it was quite heavy. So. Um, Zoe and Hazel have just messaged me and saying that they didn't actually bring waterproof gear because they didn't realise it was going to be raining today. So it looks like they might not come after all. But we've arranged to meet each other in Hay on Wye Village for a cup of tea. And um, I suppose we'll see what the weather's like and what the forecast is like there. So hopefully they can do a little bit with me at least. Um, if not, I'll be soldiering on on my own, I guess. Right, so I made it to Hay on White. I've just um, come from the campsite. It's kind of stopped raining. It's like sort of stopped raining, but there's a little bit of spit in the air still. But managed to find the lovely Zoe and Hazel. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they thought they were going to cop out, but actually they've changed their minds now that it's down to a spit. So they uh, they are going to come with me. It's supposed to be heading to Knighton today, but I don't know. It's 15 miles away in my pack. I don't know how much it weighs, it's, it's got to be like 15 kilos. I've got three or four kilos worth of food, three litres of water, so it weighs an absolute ton. So I think we're just going to take it as it comes and see how far I get to about two or three in the afternoon and then make a plan to think about stopping. So see you later. We're just following the River Wye. It's really pretty, there's a lot of canoeists that come down and canoe here going through a field of sheep at the moment. It's very sort of misty and the sky seems really low. Although the rain seems to have stopped. So hopefully it'll stay like that, right? Hopefully. hopefully. Please. <laughs> Please stay like that. <laughs> so I think we've got a bit more to go and then we go inland and, and probably go up that slope over there, I guess, because it goes left and there is a bit of an uphill section. But we'll have to see when, when we get to it, I guess. So poor Hazel and Zoe have just had to wring their socks out because we went through <laughs> this really grassy field and because of the rain it's soaking wet. Well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea not to bring the waterproof trousers to <laughs> on a walking ship? We are so prepared. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going to be fine. <laughs> nice big steps at the end of a hill. I seem to like putting steps at the end of hills. It's like a special treat. Ooh. They're all different heights as well which is just to make it slightly more exciting for the hiker. <laughs> this is what happens when you have a heavy pack. Everyone gets to the top before you. Do their stretches, has a rest and a drink and a snack and as soon as you get there they just take off. No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Where are we going? That way, I suppose. Yeah. Alright, <laughs> let's do this. Unfortunately, we can't get the views because it's really misty today. But believe me, this view would be amazing if it was blue sky today. So, uh, just tramping on. I'm not taking too much video footage because it's been raining on and off, and I didn't want to get my, my phone wet. But um, also, we just had a bit of a fall. Sorry, Zoe. <laughs> She slipped over in some sheep poo and uh, it was a bit icky. So <laughs> we're all looking forward to kind of washing our hands and, and sitting down for a bit and eating some snacks and nice lunchy kind of foods, I think. 
Well, we can see off in the distance there, the village, and I think it's about a mile and a bit away from where we are right now. So, I don't know, another half an hour or so and we'll be there perhaps. And hopefully we'll find ourselves a nice bench. It looks like there's a church there. Churches normally have benches, don't they? So. <laughs> yeah, sit on the graveyard, yeah. <laughs> And luckily it's going downhill and I think it's all downhill now to the village so that's a bit of a treat. I need to sort out my pack. My pack is so heavy today it's causing my back a few issues. So my hips are aching, my lower back and also my left heel is, not heel, ankle is hurting a bit where it's rubbing on the boot so I'm going to have to make some adjustments when we, when we stop. But basically the Garmin tells me that we've done seven miles and if today is supposed to be 14 and a bit miles, we're pretty much halfway, which is great. So we're making really excellent progress. So this is about my pace at the moment. And this is the church in New Church. New Church! <laughs> and we just met a couple that told us they're serving tea and biscuits inside the church. How fantastic is that? Give me a whoop whoop. Woohoo! <laughs> We're all covered in sheep poo and mud. Look at the state of my trousers. It's just unbelievable. So um, we're going in and we're going to eat tea and biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> so there's like an honesty box here and uh, a table full of biscuits. Look what they've got. And tea and there's a kettle. So we're having a, a nice picnic spot here for sure. It's quite a little church. What's over here? Oh, a little pulpit. Nice. It's supposed to be turning left after this farm. We can hear that there's a lot of sheep around here somewhere. Kind of interested to see just how many. <laughs> You're so shy on camera, you <laughs> see. She's chief map reader now, apparently. Yeah, because the map was really heavy, so <laughs> I needed to offload some weight. Well, I didn't want to. Here they are. Do you think they're getting fleeced? Getting shorn. Yeah, they're in two little groups. Oh. <laughs> okay, so what have I learnt today on my trip? Every day I'm learning new stuff. And today, thanks to the help from some friends <laughs> and creative brains at work, um, come up with a new solution basically realize that every piece of kit has more than one use so my little sit mat it's like a little piece of foam about the size of your bottom that insulates you from the wet and cold when you sit down but today it's also doubling up as a bit of a back protector so I'm not sure if I could actually make it work on my own probably could if I really put my mind to it but so he's been helping me tuck it into the back of my trousers <laughs> to basically protect my lower back from my rucksack because my rucksack's so heavy today because I've got four kilos of food, probably a little bit less now actually because I've eaten some of it, um, but all the water. Um, it was really pressing into my lower back and causing me a bit of problem on my left side. So I've got a bit more padding now and the pain has gone away. It's all good. I managed to swap some dried apricots for some deep heat to put on myself as well. <laughs> so a bit of bargaining going on today. <laughs> I realise actually you come across loads of people and people do want to swap stuff with you and have, you know, a little bit of banter and swap uses of things. Everyone's out to help each other. So it's really reassuring that you're actually hiking with friends. Um, I've seen a guy today that I've seen on two or three other days. Um, he's a little bit up ahead with a bright blue pack, which is quite useful. So sort of double check if we're going the right way. We should be near a village now that has a pub. 
not sure if we're actually going to go in for a drink, but it's a sort of handy lose spot and a good marker of how far we've got to go. We're doing pretty well. We've probably done, I would say, 12 miles, you think? Does that sound about right? And um, so, yeah, if it's going to be just shy of 15 or about 15, then I'm going to make it and no problem. I've already booked into a campsite for the night, so I've got the spot reserved. So basically, everything is good. It's a very steep one going down. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take it slowly with my sticks. You can now see the climb that we've got to do. That one that you can see in the mist in the background is going to be... Basically, we start it on the left-hand side behind that tree. Go up. When we're on the top, we walk the whole length of it. Back down the other side, and then that's the finishing point. So we're in this village and we just come across a sign saying Kington four and a half miles. We've done 12 miles and uh, so how does that work out? Like I was saying yesterday we have to add like two miles on for each time. In the book it says 14 and three quarters so if we've done 12 that's going to be a good 16 mile day by the time we get to Kington. It's just a little bit far really. It's a pretty stream here going under. That's your pub in this village, but I don't think we're going to stop at it because it's going to take too long. We're getting ready for the climb now. We're at the bottom of the hill to show you. That hill behind me, that's the one we have to climb up. And then that is the last climb of the day. But then when we get to the top, we've got probably another three miles to go. We're dropping down into Kington. So we're still battling up the hill really really misty now I can hardly see anything at all and for the last half an hour we've been expecting to be coming down to Kington just going on and on so I'm starting to suffer a bit in my body now my left heel is I don't know if that's a blister there's something going on in my left heel and um, my shoulders are killing me from the weight of the pack so I'm really looking forward to getting to Kington hopefully I hope we've reached the top now, maybe. Every time we think we've reached the top, it keeps carrying on and carrying on and carrying on. So we've done a lot of mileage today. We're already on about 14 miles and there's probably another two to go still before the campsite. So it's quite a bit, quite a bit going on. I'm trying to keep myself relaxed, but it's not, Ah, oh, that's a signpost. Thank goodness. We also don't really, we got a little bit lost back there and weren't sure. There's so many paths up on the top ridge here that we're not sure which one we're supposed to be on. So we've been guessing. I looked at the Garmin, but the Garmin wasn't that clear. Zoe's in charge of the map now. She's a very good map reader, so that's helped me a lot. But um, it's just really uncertain because there's no office dike signs. We can't get that reassurance that we're on track. Just when we thought we were supposed to be getting to the ridge and coming down, we're still going up. <laughs> but not for much longer, hopefully. I don't know. Can you see it in the background? They, there's a post. It doesn't really show up in the video very well. It is there, I promise. <laughs> yeah, it's tiny in the background. So the girls are still in good spirits, as you can see. <laughs> Mainly because they haven't run out of food, I think. <laughs> Which is good. I'm getting very close to running out of food. I've eaten most of my... I've eaten my crackers. I've eaten my flapjacks. I've eaten my biscuits. I've got... I think I've got one biscuit left. So, better get there soon. That's what I reckon. So we're all in really good spirits now because we just saw a guy walk in the opposite direction and the asked him... Bag. With a co-op bag! <laughs> Those ones are kind of sensitive to that because they both work in the co-op. <laughs> so, um, so spot them a mile off. But he said it's 20 minutes down to it's Kington. Not 20 miles. Not 20 miles, 20 minutes. So it's now quarter past six. We'll see if this is Welsh time or actual time. <laughs> but we have actually... Have we started going down now? It's hard to tell. I think so. Yeah, I think we've started going down now. Yeah. Oof, it's been a long day. We're all happy to finish and um, get out of our muddy damp things and well they're going to go back to a nice warm house i think <laughs> which i'm slightly jealous of now 
might get some hot food. I'm starting to think about taking a kind of zero day tomorrow just to relax, recoup, get some washing dry, that kind of thing. I'll see how I feel though. All right, so we're just arriving in Kington. Uh, it's been half an hour, so the 20 minutes was actually half an hour. Here's the sign, Nick. Um, the girls are in a little bit of a rush because they just booked a taxi and the, the taxi driver was a bit grumpy and he said that they had to be there in 30 minutes um, because 40 minutes was too long and he wouldn't be able to take them if they turned up in 40 minutes. So now we're kind of brisk walking the last section. I can't wait to put my rucksack down and take my boots off and just get my tent up and get settled to be honest. But we're nearly there. I think probably I've got another half an hour walk to get to the campsite and then I can do just that. Is that the taxi? This looks like their taxi. Patient taxi driver. My goodness, I seem to be nearly there. There's a sign behind me saying campsite, which is good. I have to go this way. And apparently it's just down here. So, just had a look at the Garmin. I've done 17 miles today with this pack, which has got to be 15 kilos. Right, so I just put the tent up and it is soaking wet. And I mean soaking wet. Like everything is just drenched from the rain this morning before I left when I had to take it down. So even the inside, I don't know if you can see, that's quite shiny. The shininess is because it's so wet. So I'm not sure what to do because it's still really like, humid and damp here as well. So I've got a, um, it's like a dishcloth kind of, you know, like a, a micro microfiber cloth. So I'm going to have to just wipe it out. Um, maybe just cook myself some dinner and wait a bit and hopefully that's going to do the trick because I've got a down sleeping bag and I don't want to get it wet because if it gets wet it's not going to keep me warm. No, the nights aren't meant to be very cold which is a relief. I've got all these wet clothes that I've been cutting around all day because I did my laundry this morning. Which I can't dry. <laughs> this is actually my first experience of having a completely soaking wet day where I can't do anything and it didn't even dry out. It's we had a couple of hours of less spit, but mostly it's been this sort of fine drizzle all day. It's still, I wouldn't say it's raining, but it's just this sort of humidity in the air that doesn't go away. But I'm feeling like I'm going downhill a bit, so I really need to just have some hot food. I can hear it's actually just started raining again on the tent, which is not what I need right now. <laughs> 